Welcome everyone. Today we are working on the 94 uh, single cab dually. Uh, we're going to be swapping out the automatic in here for a manual transmission. Now, I've never done one of these personally. Um, I know what's involved more or less. We've got to change out uh, the pedal assembly, obviously change out the transmission. Um, I'm thinking, I think that the automatic is either slightly longer or slightly shorter than the uh, manual transmission. So we'll have to uh, probably get a draft shaft made or two, depending on what I have or might not have in stock. So anyhow, um, let me show you guys what we got going on. So I've already been under here and I took off the, uh, the skid plate and just so I can show you guys what we've got going on, but there's the auto transfer case. Now I'm not going to film a whole lot because it's pretty tight under here to try to get a camera and just kind of film the whole thing. So I'm not going to worry about that, but, um, We'll go along as, you know, kind of, you know, the steps that you're know, going to need to take to uh, do it if you're going to do it yourself. But we need to take off both front and rear drive shafts. Um, you can you can take off the transfer case um, if you want. I'm going to try to opt in leaving it on and leaving it attached uh, for this time because because we're taking it out. It's a little harder with all that extra weight trying to put it back in. But for this time, I think I'm going to try to leave it out. Um, but you have to brace up the back of the trans back here so that way you can pull out your cross member across here. Now this Dodge cross member, um, if you're not familiar, you can't, it doesn't come straight down. You gotta go up and then you gotta go front or back with it um, because it's kind of like it sits on a wedge. I don't know if you can tell by that, but this is, this is the inside of the frame right here and you see how this is kind of kicked out. So yeah, we can't come straight down with it. We gotta more or less jack up the back of the trans push this cross member back out that way or forward whichever i'm not sure which way is going to work best but uh and then that'll come out and then more or less it'll be taking taking all of your uh bill housing bolts out all the way around it and then you've got converter bolts in the uh front side that you'll have to you know turn the engine over uh to get out so so quick update on the uh cutoff i did manage to get it off the trailer as you can see um and I've been thinking about it and I'm probably going to go ahead and go ahead and cut all this, this separate the frame from the axles. That way one, I can, cause I had to get both tractors over here and, and even then it still, it picked it up, but the way I did it, it wasn't very uh, safe trying to get off the trailer. So, um, but more or less, even if I do decide to, to splice it right here, I'm going to have to cut this part anyway. So I think it'll be easier. One, we'll just, we'll just take, you know, separate the frame from the axles and the suspension, take that off. And if we do decide to use it, that way we can clean up everything um, and get it looking good. So that's gonna be the plan. It's not gonna be uh, right away, I don't think, because like I said, the semi's still down. So it's not like we're in a hurry or anything, but that's gonna be the plan whenever we get back to it. So that's just a quick update. Everything's been going fine until this last bolt right here. Um, I don't know if you can see, nope, wrong one. Anyhow, it's it's stripped off. I don't know if I didn't get it on all the way at first when I was when I was uh, smacking on it, but anyhow, it won't come out. But not to worry, um, because I have the uh, universal wrench. So we're gonna put this on here, get this off, and uh, keep keep plugging along. wouldn't be a job complete without some uh, shed blood so I took the dipstick tube out before I realized that yeah there might be a lot of uh, fluid that still come out but got it down I my jack here shifted so it's really not uh, holding anything but I probably almost should have just put it under the pan and then balance the back end uh, balance the transfer case but as you can see it didn't I mean, I got it out, but it didn't do, didn't, yeah, it wasn't the best. So I don't know if you can tell, but this five speed is noticeably shorter. Um, this one here is roughly eh, 25 and 25 and a half. This one here, probably 31 and a quarter, three eighths, something like that. 
Um, so we'll have to get a dry shaft. I do have one that may or may not work. I have to measure it. So, but all in all, I think we will have to at least um, shorten. I, I think I have a front one that would work, um, but I will have to find a rear shaft and get it probably either shortened up if I have ones too long or get one made all together. So, but anyhow, we made a mess as you can see. I'm gonna go get some stuff to clean this up and. Then we will take the flex plate off and start putting the flywheel on. So just a little bit of change of plans. Um, haven't taken the flex plate off and I got some rags down here soaking up the fluid. Um, I have I have everything to put back together as far as um, I have a clutch, um, flywheel, pressure plate, everything like that. But uh, let me show you what I'm talking about. This clutch I think was replaced um, not that long ago in the other truck I had. And I mean, there's really no, I don't see any, uh, you know, heat cracking or nothing like that. So I'm gonna reuse this, um, but this is what I'm, I mean, there's still material left on it, but while it's apart, I'm just gonna go ahead and get a generic one put back in it. Um, like I said, it's not horrible, but I'd rather just have a fresh one and more or less this can still be a backup. Cause this, this here, I mean, there's, this is still pretty, uh, pretty decent, but anyhow i'm gonna go to the store right now and pick up a new i'm gonna i'm gonna use this but i'm gonna go ahead and get a new clutch and a pressure plate to go in so we're gonna pause this video we're gonna stop what we're doing and we'll probably pick back up tomorrow because i don't have a lot of time um once i get back from from the auto parts store so we'll be back in a few okay we're back working on the second gen uh manual swap anyhow i'm underneath the truck it's probably gonna sound echoey but Got the flywheel on, um, bolts are loctited and torqued to 100 foot pounds, I think. I, don't, I think that's what they are. Um, and I got some Loctite that are gonna go in the uh, pressure plate. Got a new clutch right there. So we're gonna put it all back together, um, but make sure you clean, got, I already cleaned this off, but break clean this off real well if you're reusing it or if it's new. I still gotta clean this one off, but gonna get this off and then if you guys have never done a clutch before, make sure you have a uh, lineup tool. Just makes it a whole lot easier. Otherwise, you gotta pull the input shaft out of the transmission to make sure it lines up right. So there's what it looks like once it's in. Like I said, this alignment tool right here it goes in the uh, clutch itself. And then when you're done, pull it out, but that slides up in your needle bearing up there, your pilot bearing, and uh, make sure it's aligned that way. Whenever you go to put the transmission in, you know your clutch isn't off center like this and you're trying to make it fit and it won't it should be centered up like that so it's in and um easier bolts pretty much bottom out on the flywheel that's when you know they're tight and then you give them the little you know torque wrench i don't really know what spec they are but i just get them you know good and tight and uh be good enough so next thing we gotta get a few things out of the way here um this is the shift linkage um because this is an automatic and we got to take there's a couple bolts on the outside i might just there's we don't have to take it out but i might just pull this shaft out for now yeah, but uh gotta get that out of the way and then after that be ready to stick the trans up in here it's actually the next day and quite a bit later uh finally got the transmission up in here and it took some finagle let me tell you i uh, didn't really know what i was doing wrong but i guess i had it up too high and i just couldn't figure it out for the life of me and rolling around under here and just wiggling this and wiggling that. Finally got it in place. But um, anyhow, uh, I'm calling an audible, audible a little bit on the uh, transfer case. I wanted to use the, uh, the DHD that I've had laying around, but I don't think that it's going to, well, I know it's not going to work because the, the output on this is a lot heavier duty than on the automatic. Um, I think I could change the input to the uh, transfer case, but I'm just going to use a, a, a DLD that I have uh, laying around so I don't have to fiddle with that just because I, I'm sure they're the same I just pull out the front um, and put a new one in but I don't know don't want to take the risk right now I'm not gonna be using four-wheel drive that much it's gonna be a work truck if I do use it you know it's just gonna be uh, it's not gonna be like I'm b doing boosted launches or anything because it's not what we're trying to accomplish here so more or less I'm gonna put the DLD in here and uh, call it a day that way I don't have to do anything extra work and uh, it should should work out just fine anyway so let's get to working on that treasure case is in and 
was gonna put the cross member in, but I don't have, there's some kind of adapter piece that goes with this bushing over here, and I don't know where it's at. I gotta go see if I can find it over there. Um, but it's getting late. It's not late, but it's getting dark out, and there's not a lot of light under here. So we're gonna figure it out in the next video. So anyhow, we'll figure out how to get our slave cylinder in here, master slave, whatever you wanna call it. Um, and I know the front, I got a front drive shaft that I think will work and then we will have to figure out either probably have to get a, uh, a rear one made and uh, figure it out from there. So anyhow, that's it for part one. I'll go for part two and we'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.